This is the Google Pixel 5. It's simple, it's small, and it's a new approach for Google. But should you really buy this if you're coming from a flagship phone? Here's my thoughts. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Chris Spice, and if you do go on to enjoy this video, gently tap that like button, it's fed up with being smashed, and subscribe of course. The Google Pixel 5 has officially launched in the UK and I managed to get my hands on one. I've been using it for a couple of days and I wanted to share my thoughts on whether I think you should buy this or not. And I'm going to start the video with the answer. The answer is probably no unless you're in a very specific category. This isn't a full review as such, but after using it for a little while, I've got a good idea of the good and the bad. So I'm going to talk about that. Then I'm going to talk about whether Google's flagship lives up to that of other brands. Let's start with something I actually quite like, and that is the design and the feel of the phone. Some have said it's quite boring, but I actually quite like the minimalistic and simple design. Um, I also really like the textured back. It is so satisfying, and I'd actually much rather have this um, than the sort of shiny look you get on most phones that attracts fingerprints quite a lot. So one up for that. The camera module on the back is quite simple um, and it doesn't protrude as much. So no wobble when you put it down on the table, which is always good news. Of course, you've got the fingerprint scanner on the back, which is the only fingerprint scanner. Um, and I'm not sure I'm a fan of these fingerprint scanners on the back, but it definitely is in the right place for your finger to land on it perfectly. Unfortunately, the fingerprint scanner isn't as fast as I would hope. And um, when you compare it to the S20, the X version uh, with the fingerprint scanner in the screen it's actually a little bit slower than that which I wasn't expecting at all and as soon as my hand started sweating at the gym it literally didn't let me in at all I tried both fingers I tried over and over again it wouldn't let me in and that was after five minutes of jogging so not even full sweat so I'm actually really impressed with the screen on this phone even though I'm coming from the Samsung S20 it's sharp it's vibrant um, you can't make up pixels at close range which is really nice Videos look pleasing on it, and even though it's only 90 hertz and not 120 hertz, I really didn't notice that much of a difference when scrolling. The hole punch cutout is small enough and doesn't really intrude, and the aspect ratio of the phone means you won't see the hole punch cutout when you're watching most videos on YouTube. When I first started using the phone, it was a bit slow and buggy, and at first I put that down to the Snapdragon 765 chip, which isn't the flagship chip at the moment. But after doing a little bit of an update, it seemed to improve things, which is quite nice. So much so that when I tested it opening apps against the Samsung S20 Exynos Edition, um, it opened the apps pretty much the same speed, if not sometimes faster. The only thing it did struggle with is processing those photos. It's a little bit annoying having to wait a couple of seconds um, for your photos to load, and that is probably a limitation of the chip. Um, where Google puts so much software power into their photos, um, they really need a stronger, more powerful chip to handle that software power, and the Snap Snapdragon 765 ain't it. That brings me to the cameras. The cameras are, as always on a Google Pixel phone, on point. Exposure is good, dynamic range is good, and the processing is good. The photos are hella sharp. So all round a good camera. The photos just have a certain pop to them while still remaining true to life. And hey, we have an ultra wide camera on here now, um, but it's more of a almost ultra wide. The field of view on it is only 107 degrees, and when compared to other ultra-wide cameras on phones, this is definitely a lot narrower. So it doesn't have that true feel of the ultra-wide, which is a shame because that camera is probably my most used camera on other phones. So the cameras are definitely still up to par in 2020, but if you've got an older Pixel, I'm not sure there's much new here to get excited about. In terms of video, we do have 4K at 60 frames per second, but the standout feature for me is probably that stabilization, which is amazing on walking shots. It's almost like you're using a gimbal, it's insane. It's not so great for more complicated shots, but I am pretty impressed with the overall performance of the video, especially when considering I wasn't too happy with the 4K video quality, the over-sharpened mess on the Samsung Galaxy S20. Now to a bit of a personal opinion, and that is the stock Android experience on the Google Pixel. Most people say you buy the Google Pixel for that stock Android experience. You don't get the bloatware, and coming from Samsung, I'm actually really happy not to have all those Samsung apps on my phone just taking up space. Um, it's also really nice to be able to swipe away all notifications. I can't tell you how many notifications on Samsung you can't swipe away. They just stay up all the time. And it's so annoying for someone like me who just likes to have a clean screen. But I found it lacking in anything that resembled fun. Or those customization options that Android users flout about all the time. And then when I went to put Nova Launcher on it, you get all these glitches like the home screen flashing when you go back to it, or the app switch are taking longer or just glitches and not working at all. 
And bear in mind, this might be a, a Nova Launcher problem and not a Pixel problem, but it is a problem I had when I was using Nova Launcher on this phone. It also has to be said that the speakers on this phone are average at best. You have two speakers on the bottom and no earpiece at the top, which means everything you hear in calls or when you're watching videos for stereo audio, it's coming through a speaker behind the screen. For watching videos in landscape, that means that most of the audio is coming from the bottom of the phone, so it's only going into one ear, so it's not necessarily ideal. And when you're making calls, that it's only coming through that speaker at the back of the screen, um, which isn't so great quality, and I did struggle to hear people at times. So overall in everyday use, it's really snappy. The screen is a pleasure to use for watching videos and scrolling, and the camera's great for photos and videos. But that audio quality, the not so wide, ultra wide, and the lack of customization options and maybe support for Nova Launcher, let do let it down a bit. But that's not the biggest flaw. This phone's biggest flaw, in my opinion, comes down to the price bracket and what the competition are doing in this price bracket. For the same price, if not £50 cheaper in the UK, you can get the OnePlus 8T, which is newly announced, which has a 120Hz screen and actually wide ultra-wide camera, as well as two more, albeit quite useless cameras, a better Snapdragon 865 chipset and a larger battery. It's even on Oxygen OS, which is relatively close to the stock Android experience. For the same price, you can also get the Samsung S20 Fan Edition, although not the 5G version, but even that comes with a 120Hz screen, a bigger battery, a telephoto camera, and a Snapdragon 865. And for $100 more, you could get the iPhone 12, which I definitely argue would last longer than this phone due to the state-of-the-art A14 chip, and the cameras are definitely going to match up to the Pixel, if not beat them. Now, it's no secret that Google aren't actually making too many of the Pixel 5. I think there's about 800,000 from what I read in an article, which is nothing compared to the amount that Apple is shifting with the iPhones. It could be that they are charging this amount because they've had to pay more for the parts um, because they're not buying it in such like large quantities, and that's why they're charging this amount. But it's reflecting in what you can actually get for the phone as, as a consumer. So who's actually going to buy this? Maybe someone who already has an older Pixel and wants to upgrade without going outside that box, or who really enjoys those Pixel cameras. I'm going to be using the phone for the next one or two weeks, and my aim is going to be to find a reason to buy this phone over others uh, in the price bracket. Either way, it does become difficult to recommend this phone when there are so many good options at the price point. And for most people, I'd say shop around and do some comparisons. So that's it from me, I've been Chris Spice. If you have any comments or questions about the Google Pixel 5, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see the next one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.